Hello people of planet Earth! It's Average Baiters here, and today I'm going to show you 9 bolt action rifle mods for Fallout 4 and tell you which ones are worth downloading and which ones are worth dropping into the recycle bin. I've got so many mods to cover today, I won't waste your precious time on reading a list of them off. I know you only have a couple free hours to play this game after work, so let's jump right into the thick of this video. It's hard to pick only one of these mods to recommend, since none of them are incompatible with each other. You could easily load all of them at once if you wanted. But if I was forced to choose just one, it would be Varmint Rifle, The Return. This mod has everything you could want. It's lore friendly. It's integrated into leveled lists. It has custom animations and a good number of modifications. There's only one minor issue with this mod, but we'll get to that when I talk about it in more depth. For now, let's just go through the list and try to stay sane as we deal with these mostly mediocre weapon mods. First mod up is the War for End All Wars, SMLE. Yeah, English is not the first language of this mod author. This Lee Enfield rifle isn't integrated into leveled lists, but it can be found in two different locations. One at the Irish Pride Industries shipyard, in this locker, and another legendary variant called Capyong that does 50% extra damage against humans at Fraternal Post 115. One huge problem with this mod is that it breaks the cell names of both of these locations, changing them into Korean. This issue can be fixed rather easily in Fallout 4 edit by opening the name record for both cells and copying the English name over. Additionally, if you use Previsibeans Repair Pack, make sure to load it after this mod or you'll have messed up previs data for these cells. Once you finally have the weapon in your hands, you'll soon realize that even though this mod requires bullet counted reload, that feature doesn't actually work. You'll always load 5 or 10 bullets into the weapon, regardless of how many you've fired. Besides that, the animations do look decent. More importantly, this gun is functional in both first and third person, including in power armor. The power armor third person animations have been copied from the vanilla game's hunting rifle animation, but they do fit closely enough. Something worth noting is this gun uses the same aim model as the hunting rifle, so any mod that changes the vanilla hunting rifle's recoil or spread will also change this weapon's characteristics as well. Another thing is if you have a certain perk, I think it's Rifleman, but I'm not sure, you can pull the bolt on this weapon back insanely fast. It looks pretty cool. Moving on to modifications, this weapon doesn't have that many. There's a few receivers, and there's an option to use 5 or 10 round internal magazines and load them with or without stripper clips. There's different scopes, damage modifiers up to 300%, and an option to change the gun's caliber from vanilla 308 to a custom 303 British round. But since this ammo doesn't appear anywhere in game, you have to craft it at the chemistry workbench. Overall, this is a decent lore friendly weapon. If only bullet counted reload worked, and if there were a few more modification options, I might have kept this one in my load order. Second on the list, we have the Arasaka Type 38 rifle, made by the same Korean guy who made the Lee Enfield mod. And much like that mod, there's no leveled list integration. Instead, one instance of this weapon can be found at Diamond City, inside the Power Noodles stand. And another more unique instance with a legendary armor-piercing effect can be found at Concord Museum. This legendary gun is called the Patriot, the bloated, independence fighter's rifle. Wow. A rifle like this is almost worth breaking Concord Museum's cell name over. This weapon has some decent looking animations, and unlike the Lee Enfield, it has its own aim model. But that's where the positives end. Once you enter power armor, this gun flips out in first person. You can't fire or reload it in this broken state. That really sucks for power armor users. At least it works in third person, I guess. As for modifications, there really aren't that many of them, and some seem to be broken when used together. Also, there aren't any scopes available for this weapon. At least you can alter the iron sights zoom. Ugh. This mod sucks balls. Don't bother downloading it. Next up is the Escape from Boston Shaytac M200 Intervention mod. I'm sure you remember this gun from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This weapon is supposed to be placed into leveled lists via script, but because the script file wasn't placed in the proper folder, that doesn't work. The only way to acquire this rifle is by spawning it in with the console or finding the unique legendary variant in the BADTFL evidence locker. Half of this mod's scopes require the see-through scopes mod, or they won't display properly. 
Luckily there are non-STS versions of most of the scopes if you don't have that mod. Also, I can't verify this myself, but some of the scope reticles appear purple if you have an ATI graphics card. You'll need to download a patch to fix that. There's also a patch for the Tactical Reload mod. I didn't try it, but I assume it works fine. I like this gun's animations, they're based on a set from Battlefield 4. But sadly, like the last mod we looked at, everything completely stops working as soon as you enter power armor. That really sucks. As far as customization goes, there are bipods, lasers that don't help you aim at all, flashlights, different barrels, a lot of okay stuff, but the fact that this mod doesn't work in power armor is a total deal breaker for me. The AMAC 1500 is our next mod, and it's the first one so far that has working leveled list injection. Fancy that. There's also supposed to be a unique version somewhere, but I'll be honest. I spent the better part of an hour searching for it in the glowing sea where it's supposed to be, and I couldn't find jack shit. So I gave up and spawned it in. If you want to go out looking for it, you go right ahead and do it on your own time. This weapon is unique, to say the least. The recoil is ridiculous, and you have to reload after every shot. I love the animations and sounds of this weapon, and it works in power armor, mostly. For some reason you can't jog anymore in third person while you're in power armor. I'm not sure why that is. Also the gun uses hunting rifle animations, but whatever, that's something you have to expect at this point. This weapon doesn't have that many modifications, just a few different scopes, barrels, stocks, and an option for a suppressor or muzzle brake. There's different ammo types, so you can fire explosive ammo, hollow point ammo, and so on. This weapon is super awesome, and it's a very unique gun for sure. My only real issue is the third person power armor animations, and the fact that I just couldn't find the unique variant. Other than that, this mod is fucking great. Fifth on this list is the XM2010 Enhanced Sniper Rifle. This gun is integrated into leveled lists, or can be crafted at a chemistry workbench. There are no pre-placed variants in the world. That's good. I'm glad I didn't have to spend 37 minutes looking for them. This gun is highly detailed. Animations and sounds are of excellent quality. It's supposed to have some features like variable zoom or thermal sights, but I'll be honest, I couldn't get any of that shit to work. When I pressed the hotkey, the pop-up said I switched my scope zoom level, but nothing changed. The scope was still stuck at 8x zoom. I don't know what I'm doing wrong and I sure as hell don't know what these inventory items are for. And honestly, I don't care. All I care about is that this gun works with power armor. That's great, thank god. And there's no shortage of modifications for this rifle either. By default it uses 308 rounds, but you can modify it to fire 50 cal. There's different camo wraps, tons of scopes, plenty of paint jobs, laser sights, suppressors. You could put the damn Ukrainian flag on this hush puppy. What more could you possibly want? I think this mod is incredible. Aside from the features that were either broken or incomprehensible to me. Also note that this gun has a tactical reload patch and a patch for purple scopes if you're unfortunate enough to be saddled with an ATI graphics card. On to the next gun. The Bruger and Thaumet SPR comes in two versions, one with 2K textures and one with 4K textures. I downloaded the 2K version because my laptop sucks and I am poor. Make sure to download the leveled list integration patch if you want it. I personally didn't bother, I just spawned this gun in through the console. This rifle was a huge disappointment. The animations and sounds are pretty good, but this weapon has a huge problem. If you shoot while scoped in, the character doesn't recharge the weapon, meaning you can't fire anymore until you unscope and do a little no-scope shot. What the fuck? This bug makes the gun unusable in first person. It's also completely screwed up in power armor. In first person, the rifle has been given the gamma gun animations. At least you can fire it, but you can't uh, aim down the sights. In third person, you can only shoot once before your left arm disappears. Yeah, this gun is totally fucked. It's unusable as far as I'm concerned. There's a lot of different mods for this weapon, but I'm not even going to go over them. This weapon is totally broken. I like the animations and sounds, but they're wasted on this useless piece of shit that doesn't even work. Next up is the Handmade Anti-Materiel Rifle. This one also comes in 2K and 4K versions. Like before, I'd recommend the 2K version unless you like being defenseless for several seconds while your weapon's texture loads in. This is the only mod on this list that comes packaged as an ESL file so it doesn't take up a plug-in slot in your load order. There's four legendary versions of this gun you can find in the world, but I was too lazy to look for them so I just spawned it in using the console. 
I was expecting this mod to be shit, but it surprised me by being really good. The worst aspect of this gun is its animations. They're reused from the vanilla bolt-action pipe rifle. However, that does mean it works in power armor without issue. This gun astonished me with its incredibly versatile modifications. You can transform it from a single-shot 50 cal to a magazine-fed 308 sniper rifle, or even a bolt-action shotgun. It's awesome. I really like the design of this weapon. It fits right in with the vanilla game's other pipe weapons. If this baby had custom animations, I likely would have recommended it over the next mod because it's a close second. Second to last, we have Varmint Rifle The Return. This is kind of an old mod from back in 2016. It comes with an installer that lets you choose whether you want the weapon integrated into leveled lists or not. The worst part about this mod is that it isn't packaged into an archive, it comes as loose files. That's bad because having too many loose files can result in long load times and stuttering, even on an SSD. Luckily this mod is only 75 megabytes, so it isn't that bad. Just don't make a habit of downloading other mods with loose files in them. Besides what you can find on enemies, this rifle has two unique versions. One is the LAS gun, which is not really a laser gun, but rather an incendiary weapon. It can be found on the second floor of a ruined house to the northwest of the Peabody abode. The other unique variant is the Rat Slayer, returning from Fallout New Vegas. It can be found at the Rotten Landfill. The Varmint Rifle has some damn good animations, especially when you realize this mod is from 2016, back when most mods just reused vanilla stuff. Not that this mod didn't do its own reusing. Third person animations both inside and outside of power armor are recycled from the vanilla game's hunting rifle. That seems to be a trend with these bolt action rifle mods. Still, this gun is great. The modification options are extensive, with a good variety of receivers, barrels, muzzles, scopes, finishes, and so on. This is an excellent weapon as far as I'm concerned, that's why I recommended it at the beginning of the video. Our final mod today is the Accuracy International AX50, which doesn't have level list integration at all. It can only be found in one place, with the Treasures of Jamaica Plain, which makes going down there finally worth it for once. This rifle has good sounds, but the animations are mediocre. When you shoot, it looks like the recoil is pushing the gun downwards rather than upwards. The reload animation is painfully slow, which does make sense for a heavy weapon like this, but with the animator's lack of skill, it looks like you're taking your sweet time for no reason rather than struggling with the weight of the rifle. At least the animations do work in power armor, albeit with an extreme amount of clipping. Needless to say, this weapon continues the trend of using hunting rifle animations in third person. There's a decent number of modifications for this weapon, a few barrels, different ammo types, scopes, laser pointers, and you can paint it a tan color. Yeah, tan, bitch. Yeah, this isn't that bad of a weapon to end the video on. At least it's functional, unlike my people. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed my channel's growth over the past few weeks. If I keep gaining subscribers at this pace, within three months, Pancuronium will be monetized. And within four months, it'll be deleted by YouTube. Awesome! Toodles, everybody!